Uh, hello and welcome to the Bishop Simon Brute College Seminary YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use a daily Roman Missal for Mass or for any occasion in which you might want to use one. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to use a Missal using the Midwest Theological Forum Roman Missal as you can see right there, MTF. Um, some stuff may only come in this Missal but most of the things that I'm showing you is applicable to just about any daily missile that you might have. Like, for example, how it's ordered, how the layout is, you're going to find that in any daily missile. So I just want to make that clear. Um, another thing, you're going to see these ribbons. I will allude to it every so often throughout the video. But these ribbons are basically for where you're going to want to be. You know, like, if I'm telling you about a specific mass, these ribbons will point out uh, you can put these ribbons where you might want to be. Um, you'll see these sticky notes here. This is for my own thing, so if you get one of these missiles, you're not going to have all these sticky notes. This is just to make this tutorial easier to navigate. So right off the bat, when I open it up, uh, you'll see here a little introduction, Daily Roman Missile. Over here at this first sticky note, you're going to see like a table of contents. So if you know, you're just getting this missile, you want to find out where everything is, or you want to find out where a specific day is, you see you're going to have all of these numbers over here. So it kind of tells like where the Eucharistic prayers might be, or where um, certain feast days, or where certain devotionals may be. Um, then next you're going to see a little tutorial, kind of how to use this missile. Uh, in that is going to be concluded like a little explanation, uh, certain calendars of movable and um, fixed feast days. So, like, movable feast days such as Easter or Pentecost, and then fixed feast days such as Saints' Days or Christmas. Anyway, let's get into the actual structure and some of the things that you will most likely be using if you were to use a daily missile. So, we're going to start right off the bat here with the proper of time. Now, in a daily missile, the proper of time usually goes from the first Sunday of Advent all the way up until Pentecost Sunday and that includes all the Sundays and certain solemnities and feast days that might occur during that time. So right off the bat you see it starts off with Advent and then it will go to around Christmas time and the feast days pertain to that. And then you'll enter kind of here into Lent. Keep keep flipping through that. Then you might see, you know, you see we have Palm Sunday here. We have Holy Week and then we have the weeks of Easter. And like I say, that goes all the way up until Pentecost. So I'll just situate us right over there. I'll explain this in a second. So that takes us all the way up to the end of Pentecost. So the Missal then is going to show you the order of Mass. Now the order of Mass, it's pretty self-explanatory. That is the part of Mass, like what you'll find in here is the words of the Mass that never change, that are never, um, that are not like proper to one day and not the other. These are the parts of Mass that apply to every single celebration of Mass that you'll go to. So like you see here, the words, you know, the words of the priests and the people. Um, in most daily missiles, such as this one, it's provided for you in Latin and in English. So, flip to, um, you have the introductory rites, the penitential rite, then you'll go into the Gloria, you know, if there's a Mass that has a glory for that day, so Sundays, Solemnities, and Feast Days. Um, then you'll see here the Liturgy of the Word, you know, that has the two readings, one reading for day, two for Sundays, and uh, the gospel, all that stuff, and all the prayers that surround that, like some of the prayers of the priests, some of the responses of the people, and it gives provisions for where a gospel would be read. And then you see, you'll see here the creed, like for Sundays, that, and then you go into the liturgy of the Eucharist, you have the offertory, or the preparation of the gifts, um, it's referred to by two different titles. Then you have the Eucharistic prayer. Now this is where you'll start to see some more proper stuff. You have the re the regular text, and then it gives space for prefaces. And there is many different prefaces the priest can choose based on what Mass is celebrating. So like if you're celebrating a Mass for saints, you can choose a preface for the saints. If you're celebrating for ordinary time, so on and so forth. When you look in the Missal, you'll see. You'll see it has like Christmas, Easter, Saints, all of that. Preface for the dead, common prefaces. And then we get into the Eucharistic prayers. Now this is the prayer wherein the, you know, the bread and wine are consecrated and become the body and blood of Christ. And the priest says other prayers of thanksgiving and intentions during this time. 
and he's given several different options. There are four main ones, one, two, three, and four, and then there may be Eucharistic prayers for various needs or for certain, certain occasions. Uh, you'll see here they're provided for you. Went a little bit far there. Let me resituate myself. All right, so then after the Eucharistic prayer, you have here the communion rite, uh, the Our Father and all of that stuff, the fraction of the host, the Lamb of God, certain quiet prayers of the priest, and you have the rite where we all receive communion. You have the Behold the Lamb of God and the Lord I am not worthy and things like that. Um, the concluding rites, so the blessings, and then in some cases a, um, a priest or a bishop will choose to do the solemn blessings, so some of these are laid out. You got regular ones just for ordinary time. And then you have ones pertaining to certain seasons like Advent, Christmas, and Lent and all of those things. So that's going to be your order of Mass. And here is ordinary time. Now I told you that the proper time went up to Pentecost. And then it usually cuts in with the order of Mass. And then the daily missiles will usually pick up with ordinary time because ordinary time is the longest season of the church year because ordinary time includes any of those Sundays and weekdays that don't have a particular season or a saint or a solemnity attached to it. So Sundays outside of Advent, Lent, or Christmas, or Easter, um, and then weekdays without a, um, without a proper saint or something. So ordinary time is the longest. It has 34 weeks. So this just has the readings throughout the year. You'll notice here you'll see like Sunday A, B, or C. Uh, that there makes reference to the reading cycles. It's a very complex system, but basically um, there's a cycle for weekdays, which is uh, cycle one or cycle two, and then there is a cycle for Sundays, which is cycle A, uh, cycle B, and cycle C, and they sort of work in two different categories and they'll align with each other sometimes. And um, so like year C was 2013, 2016, 2019, and then like next year will be year C because we're currently in year B, so you see 2022, 2025, 2028. Um, year B, you see the years here. That is our, this video is being filmed in the year 2021, so you see there right now we're in year B. And then of course year A, which was last year, and then those years and that, that cycle holds true for just about every feast day. There are some certain days that have specific readings that no matter what cycle you're in, you're going to be reading out of here. Like, for example, on Holy Week, Good Friday, the Passion is always read from the Gospel of John. Um, on the Christmas Eve Vigil Mass, you always read the um, genealogy of Christ, for example. But for most Sundays and most weekdays, you're going to be pulling from either the 1 or 2 cycle or the ABC cycle. So that's your ordinary time. Uh, towards the end of ordinary time, in the, in the daily missal, you're going to see selections for solemnities that occur randomly throughout the year. So you have Holy Trinity, Corpus Christi, um, and feasts of that nature, and then certain things that may come along with that. If I flip to this ribbon, then you'll see here the proper of saints. Now what the proper of saints is, is a categorization of all the saints that have a proper feast day. So this video is being filmed in March. So for example, we just passed two saints this week. We passed March 17th, which was St. Patrick, and March 19th, which was actually a solemnity for St. Joseph. So like you'll see here January, and like January 20th right here, St. Fabian, Pope and Martyr, uh, things of that nature. So pretty self-explanatory. You keep flipping. It's headed up here like so right now. I'm pointing at May. It's like May 2nd right here, St. Athanasius, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. And now these little headings you may see under saints, like Bishop and Doctor of the Church, are going to come in handy in a second when I explain the next part of this missal, which is commons. Now what the commons are is certain text that you're not going to find in the proper of saints. Because like if I flip over here, or not really flip because he's right here, like look at December 31st, St. Sylvester the First. Pope. He has a collect, which is an opening prayer proper to him. He has some readings proper to him. You know, for example, um, some other saints, like here, Our Lady of Guadalupe, she has a lot more for her. And, you know, most saints may have like a prayer or two for them, 
but instead of filling up the missal with giving each saint their own prayer, they make it simple by having a common. So you would flip to a common for all the parts of the Mass that aren't provided for the proper of saints, but that proper prayers that still need to be said that day. You would also use a common for a saint who has been canonized after, after a certain liturgical book has been published, because obviously, you know, it doesn't stop. Once a book is published, saints are canonized all the time. So, for example, St. John Paul II, he was made a saint after Midwest Theological Forum printed this particular missal. Maybe new ones they print have him in there, I'm not sure, but I know for this one, if I were using this one, he has um, he was a pope, so he's given the heading of pastor. So then under like common of pastors, you have certain things that might fit for that day. So he has certain opening prayers. Um, in the commons are you have pastors, you have, I'll keep flipping, you have um, doctors of the church, then you have holy men, virgins, common of holy men and women. There's also a common of the Blessed Virgin Mary. If you happen to be celebrating maybe a local Marian feast day that may not be on the universal calendar, or you may happen to be celebrating, you know, you just want to celebrate Mary for a particular reason, but you just not, it doesn't have a specific feast day that day, a priest may full, pull from the commons. All right, go ahead and mark this ribbon here. So if I flip to this next thing, the next thing in the daily missal you're going to find are ritual masses. Now in this missal, all they give, all they're giving me here is masses for the dedication of a church and for a marriage. Uh, there are other ritual masses, but odds are if you're attending another ritual mass, something is going to be provided for you other than the daily missal you bring. So if you're attending a sacrament like a confirmation. Uh, like I say, odds are you might be provided like a worship aid or a program. So this thing typically just is only providing marriage and dedication of a church. Um, now under the heading of ritual masses, uh, you start to have various subheadings. So here's masses for and prayers for various needs and occasions. So you might celebrate it for a more general need, like you just want to, you know, you want to pray for the church. You have here like prayer for the Holy Church, um, for the Pope, for the Bishop. You know, you may want to pray this for the anniversary of an election or an ordination of a Pope or a Bishop, uh, for the unity of Christians, things of that nature. You know, certain certain needs within the Church you may want to pray for. Evangelization of peoples, you know, you understand. Then the next uh, subheading is for civil needs. So you have like for your particular country, for your nation or for your state. So like... Uh, Bishop Rute Seminary here is in Indiana, so if we wanted to say a mass for uh, Indiana particular attention, intention, say we're getting a new governor, or a new congressman, or whatever the case may be, if you want to pray for the state or for that leader, you'd pray like for, you know, for the nation or for the state. Um, sanctification of human labor. Uh, then there may be other needs that may not apply to you, but may apply to other people, like for the harvest. You may want to pray that in like rural communities. Again, that can apply to certain parts of Indiana. Indiana is a very rural place. Um, if there is unjust or unrest in the nation or in the world, a priest may offer a mass for preservation of peace and justice, so that can be said there. Um, war and civil disturbance. And then if there's natural disasters, like in time of famine or those suffering hunger. All right, so that's prayers for civil needs. The next thing is over here you have masses for for various occasions. So these might be these go again back to more church related intentions. So you have here like the forgiveness of sins, um, for the sick, for the grace of a happy death. These are masses you can have said for you or a priest can choose to say for someone else. Uh, the next thing here we'll have is votive masses. Now votive masses. Um, might be offered in a parish if the parish has a particular devotion or the priest may offer it if he has a particular devotion or basically if there's a particular devotion for something you may want to offer a votive mass so like for the most holy trinity if the priest decide he wants to pay extra homage to the holy trinity on a weekday during ordinary time he may offer this votive mass that's one caveat i want to make votive masses um generally are only done during ordinary time because ordinary time 
those days can be superseded by votive masses or for various needs masses, but masses such as for Advent and Lent, since the seasons are so particular, or for Christmas or Easter, since those seasons are so particular to something certain, uh, he may not want to offer a votive mass during that time, or actually he's not allowed to offer a votive mass during that time. Um, so yeah, votive mass is precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's see, what's this one? Blessed Virgin Mary, Holy Spirit. The next section is Masses for the Dead. We as Catholics obviously believe it's very important to uh, remember the dead in our prayers. So um, there's a whole section for Masses for the Dead. You have for the funeral, um, for the anniversary. You also may have Masses for the Dead in honor of like a priest or a bishop. Uh, yeah, during Easter time. Commemorations for the dead. You know, there's, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of prayers that we generally like to offer for the dead. Because we're... We're obviously taught that we need to care about them. Uh, optional readings: If you're in, um, if you're at a special mass and they're choosing to pull from some readings, chances are they're going to be pulling from a reading that's back here. And all throughout the missal, you'll see words that kind of look like this. See words or lettering that's going to direct you to a reading. So if you're at a very, uh, ritual mass and say like readings, and you see a bunch of these types of letters. Um, th those are certain readings that are provided in the lectionaries and other liturgical books as options for those playing the Mass to choose from. All right. Um, now, the last section that typically comes in one of these missiles is devotions and prayers. Now, these are prayers that you can use on your own time or like maybe during Mass or before or after Mass. Um, so like if you just want to use this as a prayer book, carry around with you, to offer certain prayers, those are provided in here. The first thing they provide is a rundown of basic Catholic beliefs. It's under here. It's under the heading, How to Be a Better Catholic. So it may tell you, like, it may pull things from the catechism, pull things about virtues, it may pull from the writings of various saints and various doctors of the church, like maybe like St. Thomas Aquinas or St. Augustine, who wrote very many things about the spiritual life and about Catholic teaching. Uh, that'll all be in here. Recommendations for how to, like, see right here, spiritual game plan. So a recommendation for certain things you can do to obviously increase your devotion and increase your prayer life. Um, the next thing it's going to offer in here is going to be basic prayers. These are the prayers that Catholics um, are generally expected to know by heart, but obviously it's not going to be held against you if you don't. So that's why they're provided here. Oops. So you have sign of the cross, the Lord's Prayer, or the Our Father, the Hail Mary, um, the Glory Be, a morning offering. You get the picture. Faith, hope, charity. Certain prayers that it's it's good for a Catholic to say often. Or it's good at least to be aware that these prayers exist. Uh, the next section here is preparation for Mass. So it has prayers for before and after Mass. has prayers see here before Mass and then... Um, Afterwards, you have prayers for after Mass, uh, thanksgivings that you can offer. Now, these are by no means required, um, but it's a good practice, especially if you're if you have a hard trouble form if you have trouble formulating prayers for yourself. It's a good practice to maybe memorize one or two of these prayers, or to read over these prayers and meditate on the words that they're saying, so you can spiritually prepare yourself for the Mass. Um, then it has a whole section here for confession. It gives a really good examination of conscience. Uh, this book was printed fairly recently, so the examination of conscience is very relevant to our times. So you'll find stuff about like problems that Catholics might be facing today. So it's always good to have something like that on handy. I definitely recommend this. I use this a lot whenever I'm going to confession. And then you have certain devotions and prayers. You kind of go back to that section of devotions and prayers. Um, devotions to the Trinity, devotions to the Holy Spirit, devotions to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Uh, I believe you have the Stations of the Cross in here somewhere. Devotions to St. Joseph, who we just celebrated. Um, various other prayers you can do, prayers before meals, um, prayers you could say before and after you do meditations or spiritual readings, prayers, in time, prayers at the time of death, if that applies to you or anybody you might know <coughs> forgive me and then in the end here there's an appendix for some other things you might have for mass so you see here appendix for the rite of blessing and the sprinkling of holy water um, 
things like that. And then here is just some business stuff, some stuff they put in here just for plagiarism and copyright sake. You have quotations and um, indices and all of that. So that's basically a quick rundown of how you would use one of these daily missiles. I mentioned I would come back to these ribbons. These ribbons, you would mark it to wherever you're going to. So, like, again, if I was going to, let's say it's Tuesday in the first week of Advent, I would set my missile, and I would have all the prayers and stuff that I need for the first week of Advent right there. Uh, the priest's prayers, the readings I'd be following, you know. You can mark this stuff beforehand and look at the text, so you can maybe formulate an idea of what the Mass is going to be about, what you're going to be praying about. You can look at these prayers before Mass and sort of prepare yourself. Um, ordinary time, again, if I were going to Mass on a specific day in Ordinary Time, let's say I was going Wednesday in the first reading cycle of Ordinary Time, I have all the readings here, um, and so on and so forth. And these ribbons correspond to the general headings of the um, different parts of the Missal. So this one ribbon corresponds to the proper of time, this to the season of Ordinary Time, this one then corresponds to the proper of Saints, so as the year goes on, you would put it to another saint, like, here's February 2nd, the Feast of the Presentation. So, let's say I was here at that Mass, I had the ribbon here, time goes by, and now all of a sudden it's May 26th, I'm going to Mass for St. Philip Neri, I would have this marked here. Uh, the next ribbon here, um, for commons, let's say I knew what common was going to be set on a certain day, I can mark it. This is getting very repetitive, but you understand the idea. Ritual Masses, you can mark it for that. You can mark it for the basic prayers. You can really mark it for whatever you want. The ribbons are really your own, but they're provided in the way that they are, um, just as a, a simple help. So, you know, you know that, oh, it's for these different things, but you can apply any ribbon. You can apply them how you want. Uh, that's really your choice. So, again, uh, that's a basic rundown of how a daily, of how a daily missile works. I uh, thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a blessed day.